Good morning and welcome to our midweek moment. I'm going to begin today by playing a recording of Psalm 98, read by the wonderful actor David Suchet. I'm sure you will recognise the dulcet tones of TV's Inspector Poirot. Psalm 98 Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvellous things. His right hand and his holy arm have worked salvation for him. The Lord has made his salvation known and revealed his righteousness to the nations. He has remembered his love and his faithfulness to Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Burst into jubilant song with music. Make music to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and the sound of singing, with trumpets and the blast of the ram's horn. Shout for joy before the Lord the King. Let the sea resound, and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. Let the rivers clap their hands, let the mountains sing together for joy. Let them sing before the Lord, for he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world in righteousness and the peoples with equity. Today the Church of England commemorates the hymn writer Isaac Watts. I wonder if you've heard of him or any of the 600 hymns he wrote. The most famous of his hymns still in use today are Jesus shall reign where'er the sun, O God our help in ages past, this is the day that the Lord has made, when I survey the wondrous cross and joy to the world. Isaac Watts was born in 1674 in Southampton, the youngest of nine children. His family were deeply Christian, but were what we would call nonconformists, who believed that the Church of England had not moved far enough away from the beliefs and practices of the Roman Catholic faith. As a child, he was a very intelligent boy who loved books and learned to read very early. He loved the sound of words, often wrote poetry and learned Latin, Greek, Hebrew and French. He attended church weekly with his family and it appears that his copious hymn writing was sparked by a challenge made by his father. Isaac felt that the hymns that were usually sung in church lacked substance and told his father so. His father replied, if you don't like the hymns we sing, write better ones. Isaac rose to the challenge and showed his father a hymn that he had written. His father presented his son's composition at church the next Sunday. It was so well received that he was asked to write another for the following week. Isaac Watts wrote a new hymn every week for the next four years. As a nonconformist, he was not allowed to study at either Oxford or Cambridge University, or go into professions such as the law or the established clergy. Instead of university, Watts attended an academy which was sponsored by independent Christians. After finishing his education, he became a tutor and chaplain and later a, an assistant minister and was finally ordained a full pastor in 1702. Watts' composing of his renowned hymn, Joy to the World, came about as a personal epiphany of sorts. After serving just less than two decades as a pastor, Isaac had to leave the priesthood due to health problems. His declining health and a brief promise of love that was quickly dashed away by rejection may have caused Watts to reflect on his own humanity. This led him to undertake a project that had been stirring in his heart for several years. He had developed a deep fondness for the Psalms of David during his childhood. With time on his hands, as he recuperated from illness, Watts set about to write a series of poems based on the Psalms. It was from this series of works that Joy to the World came to fruition. Based on Psalm 98, which we heard earlier, 
what's entwined the original Old Testament poem of David with the fulfilment of prophecy in the New Testament. The result was the Christian hymn that is still cherished today, almost three centuries later. Set to a score adapted from George Frederick Handel's The Messiah, Joy to the World has taken its place permanently in the hearts of both Christian and secular society. While many of Watts' compositions have been forgotten, this Christmas hymn remains a favourite and is often heard over the Christmas season. Of the five hymns I mentioned at the beginning, two more are based on Psalms. Psalm 72 is the basis for Jesus shall reign. And O oh, oh God our help in ages past is based on Psalm 90. Isaac Watts died on the 25th of November 1748 and a monument to him was erected in Westminster Abbey afterwards. But the greatest monument, however, are the hymns he wrote nearly 300 years ago to add substance to church services, a number of which are still used today. I'm going to close with a prayer dedicated to Isaac Watts and then some excerpts from his hymns with pictures for reflection. Almighty God, who gave to your servant Isaac Watts singular gifts of rendering your praises in verse, that he might write for your church an abundant supply of psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, stir up the hearts of your people, that they may joyfully sing your praises in this life and the life to come. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. <laughs>